Hi, uh, this is Janet Fitch, and uh, it is Writing Wednesday, usually at noon uh, on Wednesdays, but today it's uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, and I am in Victoria, Canada, um, and uh, I have questions for uh, uh, about... Um, writing, but if you ever want to have me answer questions of yours um, about writing, about the writing life, writing experience, writing uh, craft, um, I am, uh, uh, you can write your uh, questions in the comments today, or you can uh, uh, send me your comments or your questions through my website, Janet Fitch Writes, and I can design a Writing Wednesday uh, to respond to your questions. So, hi Jeffrey. So today I'm in uh, Canada, just got here, and uh, I'm up here to work on my novel. Um, I know many of you are interested in uh, things like writing uh, retreats. Uh, I, hi Valerie, I am somebody who hasn't had much luck with writing um, official writing retreats. Hi Wendy. So I tend to put together writing retreats for myself um, because for some reason to get away with my manuscript, um, uh, I have, I am completing a first draft. So uh, those of you who tuned in last time, I, I talked about my um, some of the ups and downs of the first draft and what I'm planning to do with this uh, upcoming draft. So I have friends um, on an island off of Vancouver, uh, out of, off of uh, Victor Vancouver Island. Hi, Ruthie, who uh, is uh, who are willing to have me for a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm up here to work on my book and. Uh, so I've just taken the ferry over from uh, uh, northern Washington, Port Angeles, Washington. Um, I've been since the community of writers uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my husband and I have been traveling in stages up through hot weather, through fires, through smoke, into cooler weather. Um, now we're up in beautiful Victoria. Uh, the colors are just you know, after uh, the smoke and fires, uh, it's pretty nice. Um, so I thought I would talk. I have a question for this week that I thought I would give, uh, give this a shot. So here's the question. It's Marcus, and Marcus wants to know, to what extent is being young and having less life experience advantageous or disadvantageous to fiction writing? I thought that was a darn good question. Okay, so uh, it was something that I was, I don't know if people think about as much uh, now as they did when I was younger. When I was younger, uh, people still had kind of the heritage of the writers of the 30s um, and also the beats in that we felt that it was not just advantageous to the writer to have life experience, but you read would, you would read writers' bios and they had had all kinds of jobs and they'd been the shorter cook and they'd, you know, sprayed pesticides on fields and they'd, you know, laid brick and they'd worked in factories. And, and in the era of the MFA, we have had this um, kind of false narrative being pushed on us that, you know, to study, uh, go to college, study writing undergrad, then graduate, go to uh, get your MFA in creative writing, and then you start writing. Um, and I had had a long conversation with somebody that we were staying with in Port Townsend about what happened to this idea that a writer should participate in the more the experience of uh, the world 
um, and be a little more concerned that they're uh, too much time in the in academia. And what about the value of having life experiences? It's um, it's an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, you know, obviously in graduate school, it's not something they're going to talk about too much because they're you know, they're supporting the academic approach to writing. Um, and there's much to be said for the academic approach to writing. There's much to be said for writing programs. Um, you certainly learn a great deal about craft and so forth. But I don't think you necessarily learn as much about the world going straight from high school to college to MFA to writing to maybe getting a job in... Uh, academia as you might have learned from going out in the world. Um, in my era, you know, whatever that might be, <laughs> there was this kind of sense that that uh, writing a writing life was a life of adventure and that part of becoming a writer was to go out and do things that uh, exposed you to all kinds of people, all kinds of life, um, so that you had subject matter, so that when you sat down to write, you'd had experiences, you had met people unlike yourself, you had, you know, been in situations that had pressed on, on your own rough edges. Um, and I think, let's see, Marcus's question, to what extent, this extent is being young and having less life experience advantageous or disadvantageous for fiction writing? Well, being young is always exciting. There's always something exciting about being young, but it's not something you can aspire to, you know, it's a natural condition. Um, I think that young people um, who are not curious about the world and uninterested in testing themselves against the world might really have less to say when it comes to writing fiction than somebody who has decided to go out and test themselves a bit against the world or within the world, you know, to cross boundaries of various kinds to see what life is like uh, for a variety of people, not just people like you. Um, I think that it's advantageous to people to have a wide, uh, a wide range of experiences. And, um, you know, the, the classic example of of Emily Dickinson writing, you know, fantastic poetry, having had a very sheltered life, um, can be, I think, countered in many ways by many, 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 many other writers who don't have her genius, but have been exposed to very interesting situations and people testing themselves against reality. and. It doesn't have to be throwing yourself out of planes. It doesn't have to be, you know, working on a chain gang. It doesn't have to be, you know, or you know, kind of artificially extreme. But you know, um, you know, spending some time working, flipping burgers, you know, covered grease with other people who mainly, you know, might not be your cohort at an MFA program, um, you know, that'll serve you all your life to know a wider variety of people, to have a bigger f sense of what the world is, even if you don't necessarily use it in your writing. It, it will never hurt you to, uh, you know, to do that. And so it experience, life experience is advantageous uh, for fiction writing. Um, to have had very little experience out of your own class, out of your own milieu, out of your own um, region, 
you know, is always um, um, less less of an asset. The more you know, the more you know. You know, and if you're even if you're writing about your region, even if you're writing about people like yourself, you know, to have had a broader experience of life will infuse your writing in that. I, I've noticed that that um, um, when I teach, I've had um, classes where, you know, and some of you have been in them. <laughs> I've had classes where people have come out of a creative writing program, undergrad, into creative writing program, graduate school. And I, I've got to say the writing reflects, um, it, it reflects the absence of experience of, you know, it's not age so much as the breadth of experience that I have. If you have, um, it's like being a, a chef and having really good craft, you know, that you've gone to chef school and you've had a really good craft, but you only have five things in the fridge that you can choose to cook with. And you can make a bunch of different things out of the same five ingredients, but you, you know, it limits you as a chef. Um, I've had students who, you know, on the other hand, students in the same classes who have had a wider experience. Maybe they are the first, um, uh, the first in their family to go to college. Um, that they worked all the way through school, and when it came to graduate school, um, you know, they had things to write about. They had subject matter. You know, I had a student who was in the Marines. Um, and lived up in uh, the Central Valley and took care of his grandmother, I believe, and then drove down to Los Angeles to uh, do his uh, MPW when I was teaching at USC. And, and that guy had subject matter. He knew something about the world. Um, I don't say go off and join the army or something like that. It, it doesn't have to be extreme, but ask yourself, you know, am I really how adventurous is my approach to life? You know, do I am I reluctant to try a new restaurant, to go somewhere I've never gone? You know, you see on your way home, you see that, you know, that restaurant that you keep looking at and you go, I'm going to go there sometime, but you never do. It's like make a list and every once in a while, like do something that you've never done before. Um, my husband had a uh, short story once about uh, called string, and this guy discovers this string that comes out of his back. And when he looks around, he can see where he's been. That blue string is everywhere he's been, and in the town he lives in, it's just this huge, like, like a ferry cable. You know, it's so thick of the places that he has gone, but he discovers even in his small town, there are places that he's never been. The string has never been. So think about where your string has never been, you know, rather than worrying, you know, is this the job that's going to take me forward and, you know, um, you know, raise my career, especially if you're young, um, you know, maybe think. How, would it hurt for me to try bartending? You know, would it hurt for me to try secretarial? Would it hurt me to try waitressing? Would it hurt me to do a little factory work? Would it hurt me to, you know, not be so... It's tough that people are more careerist than they used to be, or maybe it's just me, you know, what I was seeing. Uh, but there used to be um, this kind of of um, sense of adventure about the writer's life. That was one of the reasons people became writers, is that they wanted to experience life more broadly, um, you know, more, more in, in a more interesting life. And, uh, you know, if that makes me feel like I took the streetcar with Barbara Stanwyck, well, <laughs> maybe I did. But the more 
experiences you open yourself up to. And I, I don't mean, you know, becoming a heroin addict and sleeping on the beach and, you know, finding yourself in the hospital one day. But it's uh, certainly opening yourself up a little bit more and a little bit more. You know, where's the, where's the novelty? Where's the adventure? Where's the, you know, something like something a little bit strange? Um, it, it wakes you up. It makes you, you know, it shows you where you're narrow, where the, your boundaries can be pushed open. Um, I think that, uh, however, there's also um, the living of a life as if you're a character in a novel. And that has downsides too, you know, I mean, all these things. You know, there are reasons that people do what they do. Um, I remember when I was young and went through a phase of living as if I was a character in a novel. Um, and the difficulty that I had um, was that it was pretty dramatic and pretty absorbing and all kinds of bizarre things happened um, on a regular basis. <laughs> And then how I just didn't have a focus to write. You know, I discovered I need a calmer life to be able to create. So there's that dance, you know, is how do you explore? How do you handle us, you know, a little bit more adventure, a little bit more stretching as a person and still be able to have focus to do your art. So it's a bit of a dance. Um, uh, there was uh, something, you know, the making art versus being art, you know, it's like it, at some point it kind of tips over. And uh, for myself, I know I, I kind of, if, if my life is too dramatic, if I'm whipping up drama in my life, um, it becomes too difficult to focus and write. So that's the other side of the adventure. You know, there's adventure, and then at some point you also have to sit down and do something. Um, so that's very, that's very interesting. Wendy says, observe people very different from you at any age is always helpful. Yeah, ask yourself, you know, um, do I know a variety of people? You know, can I get out of my little neighborhood, you know, emotional, psychological, um, socioeconomic, and uh, talk to some, you know, meet some people who are a little different than me. You know, talk to somebody who's, you know, if you're very secular, maybe talk to somebody who's very religious. I know people, you know, avoid that, but uh, at, a certain, at a certain point, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, people of various ethnicities, uh, you know, you open yourself up and then you also start to notice when you go out, you know, it's like, wow, I'm sitting here with a bunch of people who are all like my age, my socioeconomic uh, stratum, uh, my political stripe, you know, all that it's like maybe I need to get out a little more I mean get out of my thing a little more and uh, do stuff that's not so me you know we're such a we're in such a self-catering time and I don't think it is all that good for for uh, literature I think that you know people listen to music on streaming and what that does is the algorithms, they give you more of what you like. And by giving you more of what you like, it starts narrowing down, narrow, 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 more and more and more what it perceives as things you will like. And by the time it's done, it's like, haven't I heard this frickin' song like four times already? It's like, well, that's me not saying, I wanna hear something different than this. I want to, you know, when we listen to the radio, you hear stuff you 
you didn't plan on hearing. Um, and, uh, you know, music, I was thinking, you know, at some point, <laughs> having an evening <laughs> where I just listen to stuff that I never listen to. You know, stuff that, I mean, people whose names I see in the tabloids, uh, you know, I'll read in magazines. I, I, I recognize the names, but I've never stopped and listened to their music. I have never heard a Katy Perry song that I know of. You know, it's like, get over it. You know, spend an evening and listen to some of these people that you hear. I'm telling you, this is not you, this is me. I need to, you know, get out of my, you know, some people wouldn't say it's a rut. I do like to listen to a lot of really interesting music, but you know, push it. Push your likes into stuff you don't like that much, just to see what it's like. Uh, you know, we get more out of things we don't like. Um, things that odd tastes, you know, things we're not quite sure how we feel about it. Um, it's a less comfortable life, but it's a more interesting life. Uh, so Jessica David saying, uh, Anthony Bourdain's cul culinary craft was born in Chronicle and Kitchen Confidential, a great example of this. You had to reach out to, to new, new things undifferentiated research, Peggy said. Hi, Peggy, good to see you. Um, I think that having less life experience, when I was in college, uh, taking my first uh, writing course, which I um, was pretty awful, the class was pretty awful, but there was some, somebody in my class, there were like three fiction writers and 16 poets, and uh, I remember one of the fiction writers said, you can't be, you cannot be a novelist until you're 40, because you just don't have the life experience. And I remember how freaked out I was. I was 21, and I was going to be a writer, and I just about killed that guy. You know, don't tell me I have to be wait till I'm 40 to become a novelist. Guess when I sold my first novel? I was 40. <laughs> so there is, <laughs> there is something to say for that. But you can't help it if you're 21, you're 21, you know? All you can do, hi Janine, all you can do is, is think about when was the last thing, you know, I'm 21, you know, what kind of experience do I, you know, what's coming up for me that I can expand my, um, my experience, my, you know, where can I apply curiosity? Where can I apply a little bit of adventure in my life? Um, you know, I have, I need a job, you know? bartender. I don't go into bars for work, you know. Maybe try that. You know, what are they gonna do? Fire you. Eh, how many times have I been fired? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> you know, uh, I often took jobs that I had no idea how to do them. I just was like, okay, uh, you know, yeah, I can do that. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and then I learned how to do them sometimes, and sometimes I got fired uh, before I became competent. Um, and sometimes I would become competent and, you know, then I didn't like it so much. But um, this whole issue of applying more curiosity, when is it too old to start, Peggy said, never. But when you're old, is when you really have to push the comfort, uh, the comfort level. You know, um, it's easy to eliminate adventure. It's easy to eliminate um, being uncomfortable. You know, like, do I want to be uncomfortable? You know, I'll, I'll go to a party. I don't know anybody but that one person who wants to take me. You know, go to that weird concert that sort of sounds interesting, but gee, it's gonna be full of weird people. Do I wanna go to that? 
you know, that's where the writer self says, yeah, 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 it's good to feel a little awkward, you know, it'll make you feel young again, awkward, you know, I mean, that's the, that's the time, the real time machine, it's not turning back time to when you're gloriously beautiful and all that, you know, the time machine is like, wow, feeling awake, feeling alive, feeling curious, being awkward, and doing something for the first time, you know, you're your brain responds to, um, in the neuroplastic state, um, you get, your brain gets more out of things you're doing for the first time, the things you're no good at, and you struggle. Actually, that's your brain, it uh, makes new connections uh, far, on a far greater uh, basis than when you're, an expert at something and just doing something you're expert at and you don't struggle cognitively in the same way your brain doesn't grow the same way you know when you're older so this is just being the oldest person in the room being willing to go you know oh my band's playing at the Viper room you want to come see us it's like Oh, okay, I guess I'm going to find the room. <laughs> and, you know, you end up hanging out with the parents of the musicians. <laughs> um, but, yeah, doing things, being the oldest person, my, my mother, ancient mother, used to love to go to, there was a record store in, uh, in Los Angeles called um, Amoeba. And she would go and try to get waited on by the most pierced, the most tattooed person that she can find. Because for her, that was an adventure. That was, you know, going to Amoeba and buying records from somebody with ear gauges, and, you know. <laughs> she loved that. She loved that. Uh, you know, always pushing it, always pushing it. So, um, let's see. So being more open to trying new things, meeting new people, making new friends, um, not saying there's anything wrong with people you feel way comfortable with. Um, you know, that's your, that's your inner circle. But in fact, we get more out, I'm trying to remember where this came from, but we get more out of, of we learn more and make more interesting connections. Uh, through people we don't know as well, people on the periphery of our social circles, are the connect you more to things further out of your social circles. Uh, so make it more interesting connections with people you don't know very well at all. So that means getting out of the comfort zone and moving out towards the periphery and reaching out like the little the little amoeba, you know, swimming around, a little paramecium or whatever with its little little feelers, feeling out there beyond the borders of its uh, physical body. That, that to reach out beyond the, you know, the usual, the people you know and the things you usually do uh, is a way at any age to expand um, what you know about life. So being young is advantageous, I think, because uh, young people are more willing to risk something new, because everything is new, you know? So something, somebody invites them to something, oh yeah, I've never been, never been to that before. Um, whereas an older person gets, might have more life experience, but at some point has stopped opening themselves up to new experience. So being older, I think, is at a dis disadvantage in that sense. The more you know, the easier it is to insulate yourself from the new and the unexpected, whereas young people are more open. So the idea is at whatever age to be more open. And if you are considering becoming a writer and you're a young person, and it's like, should I go to college or should I uh, uh, go into, or should I go to grad school or MFA program after college, or should I take a couple of years and um, 
kick around a bit and, you know, wait tables or, you know, take a motorcycle trip across the country or, you know, really think about it. I mean, I'm an anxious person. I'm somebody who pushes themselves um, probably more than a more adventurous person because to them it's not pushing themselves. To me it is. Um, so that I have a, to get a wider sense of who is out there and what is out there and encounters you've had and just to, to have a wider picture of reality and continuing to make friends. My God, I, I there was a woman uh, I knew a while back and I'm going to keep this vague um, because this person is fairly well known. Um, and we were getting friendly. And I said, oh, you know, why don't we meet, you know, meet sometime and do blah, blah, blah. And she says, Janet, you know, I, you know, I have enough friends. <laughs> I thought that. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I mean, she felt like she had all the friends she wanted. She had all the input she wanted. She was creating the art that used what she already had. And she felt she needed no, it, nothing new coming in. And I think that's, that's a real... <laughs> That's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> to think that you you have everything you need, you know, be a little more open. You know, there's. It's nice that she had a lot of friends and she felt very complete in her social world, but she didn't have a big range of ages because most of her friends were her age. So as she got older, you know where. Where is she replacing them? You know, where are the young, where's the young ideas coming from? You know, uh, I, I'm lucky enough. I live with my daughter, who keeps bringing new new music, new books, new ideas. You know, coming in all the time. Teaching was like that too. Meeting new people and new ideas. And, but uh, yeah, in the um. You know, it's true that writing amazing stories come out of uh, people who have had very conventional lives. But they have generally a larger understanding of life, even if they're just writing about their corner of the world. They know something about human behavior. They know something about um, people unlike themselves. Um, and that, that adds to it. It adds a, a chiaroscuro, you know, to have done different things, to have been different places in the social stratum, you know, to have been at the bottom occasionally, been at the top occasionally, transited the middle occasionally, you know, have people, friends with different experiences or been in situations where your demographic was not the standard, you know. So uh, I, I vote for that. Uh, so um, if there are not any other questions, I will, I will uh, sign off. But uh, if there are other questions about life and writing, Janine says, be curious and vulnerable. Uh -huh. And you do it. Janine is somebody who is just taking on life experience in a big way, always. Um, and uh, that's, that's something, even if you're living kind of a sedate life and you have the straight job and all, you know, search, search out something odd, something you've never done before, somewhere your blue string has never been. I don't know where. I know that that story was published somewhere. String by Andrew Nichols, worth looking at. Um, so if uh, there are no other questions, I will wrap it up from 
Victoria. Oh, here's one. Wendy asks, do you go on retreat at certain drafts on your novel? Yeah, whenever I need to, when I have a lot of material that I haven't had time to go over, I, have, I need the attention to spend unbroken hours reading and absorbing what I've already done, um, deciding what to take out. It, it, I can't be in my ordinary life. I have so many decisions to make in ordinary life, you know, that this is broken and this is breaking, you know. You know, call the Hyundai man. You know, should I get this fixed? You know, can I afford blah, blah, blah. You know, um, we're out of food. We're out of this. We're out of that. You know, uh, so-and-so wants you to do this. So-and-so needs you to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I can't be dividing my head like that uh, when I'm right now at the end of the first draft. And I'm, when you... You can't get an ending to the book unless you have a very good idea of what what's about what is it about and the way I write I don't know you know it's like I'm, I just one thing leads to another and uh, you know I need to go through get rid of what doesn't work what doesn't fit what doesn't feed the central issues I didn't even know what the central issues were you know, when I was writing it, first draft, but they're starting to come out, and now I can see, oh, I have a lot of stuff in there that has nothing to do with the book. Um, and I have a character who's kind of taking up too much space for a way, you know, taking power and energy away from the protagonist, and that's harming the novel. So I need to take that character back and I need to, so I need the time to read. After a first draft and after especially uh, the last draft when I'm reading it and for the music and the poetry of it, uh, I have to be away and not be worried about, you know, do I need the carpets cleaned? It's too distracting. So I'll do, you know, I'll do that and go on retreat. You know, I'll go, I'll, I'll figure out how to leave for weeks on end. I mean, I couldn't do this, obviously, when I had a little kid at home. Um, makes it much harder. Um, but uh, there were ways that I could do it, deals I could make with people. Um, and she'll probably always hate me for it. But... <laughs> You know, your writing as a child too. Have to, have to keep that going. Alrighty. Well, let's see if there's. Ask me anything. I have a few more minutes, and if not, I will close out. And uh, thanks, Wendy. And uh, so, wish you good writing. And. Uh, Definitely send me questions through my website. I'm happy to answer next time. Uh, I don't know that I'll always hit noon on Wednesday while I'm traveling. I probably won't be back for um, several weeks. So, um, but I will still do writing Wednesday and uh, look forward to your questions and write well.